Hello, good afternoon. My name is Elder Santos, and I want to talk to you about integrated planning process and sharing. How easy is it to sharing? Well, I would say that in today's era, in today's modern time, sharing is quite easy. And we all have our greatest friends, which share with us in Facebook their collection tie or the beach picture that we never really want to see. But is really sharing that easy? What about um, when you are in the same place, competing for the same space, is really sharing the thing that humanity does in an easy way. And obviously, I've got a nine-year-old and a 12-year-old and one command TV set. Actually, we've got two. <laughs> but sharing definitely becomes a difficult thing on a day-to-day -day basis when you're competing for the same thing. What about when you need to share that physical space or you need to share time, or you need to give away your next try to do and execute your next action to someone else because you actually believe that your action is the most important one and when it is not. Is sharing that easy at that stage? Now imagine you are managing not one multi-million dollar project, but the multi-million dollar project on the mining environment, a five billion US dollar underground construction and development program that goes on through five years before you get any revenue out of that project. Sharing space and sharing time in the correct way at that stage is not important. It's critical for the success of the shareholder value. So how do you align at that time 20 different entities to make sure that at any given moment the decision that is taken by any of these persons is actually the best decision for the best of the project and not for the best of that person. You basically implement integrated planning process to achieve a one plan, proactively manage it and discipline it, execute it. So what is IPP really about? Integrated planning process is basically a systematic approach that aligns schedules and priorities throughout different time horizons. What it basically do does is it looks at all the constraints throughout your production chain at different horizon times and it deconflicts those uh, constraints. And it then produces a one plan that can be clearly executed by your workforce. So let me give you an example. Let's say that ventilation and the capacity of ventilation underground is your constraint for the next four months. So what IPP will do is look at the activities that are scheduled in that period. And obviously, as not everybody can go underground as it becomes a constraint, it basically sequences in the perfect way what activities are more important to be executed at the right time so that you get the proper outcomes of the project during that period so that you keep your project on time, on cost, on budget. If we will talk about mining like Bali, really IPP is your choreographer. It's the person which is responsible to make sure that that little princess is going to show up at the right place, at the right moment, and bang, do magic. That is the power of IPP. Now let's talk about operational impact of IPP. What does, what does it, it really mean? We've spoke here about implementing process and or not implementing process. And, and I'm choosing the word implementing rather than installing, okay? So what, what does IPP really bring in terms of implementation at point of execution? The first one and the most important one for any industry and especially in mining, clearly safety. We spoke before about the, the impact of planned work versus unplanned work. The impact that it has first on safety, but also on cost. Clearly what IPP does is it significantly reduces your unplanned work. So it enables your workforce at any given moment in time to be executing the, around 90 to 95 percent of their activity without having to ask up, am I doing the right thing? The next impact is that it obviously is then starting bringing predictability 
to your outcomes, but it also is removing complexity from the point of execution to the planning and schedule component, which actually means it's changing the profile of that frontline supervisor, which now has much more time to focus on properly planning and scheduling his activities. And basically what it does actually do is it allows you to properly comply to your plan and deliver what you need on time at the right moment, at the right cost. Some of the results we have recently achieved in an underground or the underground mining project, 5 billion US dollars. We have implemented 23 planning practices that today are used by 1,000 people in terms of integrated planning process and management control systems. So the removal of that complexity actually allows that frontline supervision to stop focusing on management of opera or managing operating systems and managing activities and designing the proper management control system that allows them to manage the outcomes that they want to see at each one of the levels of your organization, whether it's your frontline supervisor or your area manager or your underground manager or your board. Some of the improvements that we've achieved by implementing that not only on underground construction but as well on shaft sinking and convey to surface development, 43% improvement on shaft sinking rates, three months out of the last four with monthly record rates in total advance per month, or 300% development rate improvements on uh, convey to surface development. The most important one, I've actually decided not to write it here. All this was done with zero arm to people. And that is quite powerful, I would say. So how do you achieve these results which translate into the statement from our client? How do you really implement change to a point that you achieve not only what you have designed as a perfect process or as a perfect management operating system or management control system, but actually you manage people to achieve the result using those tools and those processes. So what we're talking really here, if I pick IPP or integrated planning process, is that what it is doing, it is actually changing the operating culture of that mine. And when you talk about operationalizing culture, you're really talking about creating habits. You're actually talking about designing a framework and then training and coaching people on a day-to-day -day basis to operate within that framework, to display the right behaviors and the right actions at each and any moment. And that is really about working side by side with people. That means going down 1,200 meters, walking 15 kilometers with a frontline supervisor on the ground, or sitting with each one of the stakeholders and designing the next schedule or the next uh, plan or coaching people on how to run uh, actually a root cause analysis or perfect meeting and using those controls to take actions that will continue improving your planning and your outcomes. At the end it all becomes or it all comes back to people. Now is it this only applicable to a big mining construction project? The answer is no. I mean if your forestry company, totally integrated forestry company from forestry, nursery to uh, paper mill and you're trying to look at the cost of your logistic chain and how can you improve that, not on the execution but actually from nursery which is 10 years before you're going to transform that piece of wood into a paper sheet, integrated planning process will add value to that or whether you're talking about improving productivity at a sugarcane plantation which will produce ethanol, or whether you're talking about developing an operating framework which allows your mining operation to scale up and down according to the market conditions and the price of the commodity, being totally flexible and mining at the right moment, at the right cost, the right product that you want to sell, that's what integrated planning process does. So why is it worth implementing integrated planning process? Well, let's just imagine here that you definitely managed to implement that perfect planning process which looks at all those constraints and deconflicts all those constraints. 
Let's just imagine that you're then able to execute that plan in a disciplined and safe way, and that you've got the perfect tools to actually manage the outcomes of that plan. Let's just imagine that you're doing this by transforming the people which need to do this and actually enabling them to be the change platform for the future for that organization. Let's just imagine that what actually what you plan for is what you're going to get at the end of the day. With IPP, you can plan for that. With management control system, you can control for that. With Proudfoot, you can achieve all of that. Elda, uh, coming back to your statement here, uh, what was actually wrong at Shaft 5? Why did no one want to be there? Well, basically, the, the standard uh, advancement per week uh, planned is 21 meters per week. And the outcome when we started was seven meters per week. So clearly, no one wants to be part of a failure. And that was the case. I mean, actually, the interesting thing was that this being an highly funded project, five billion coming from basically financing, uh, the analysts obviously keep an eye on this. And what happened was the analysts went in and did an audit and uh, Chef 2, which is actually the shaft bringing additional ventilation, which will allow to speed up or not speeding up the underground development, which needs to take five years before they can get the first ore out, was at risk. And obviously, you don't want to be in a situation where you say five billion are at risk. One of the key points for me in this case study is it was actually the way we broke through to actually encourage the contractor to change. Uh, it was interesting, we were with another client, another prospect um, this week uh, in the UK with a massive shaft sinking project. And their issue is that the contractor doesn't want to know. The contractor says, look, I'm paid to do this. I'll do it my way. And that's the way it's going to be. This is what I'm used to doing. If you want to change it, then it won't be safe. Do you really want to risk that? Uh, and actually here, I think it's our ability to actually work through that and actually to show very quickly a great addition, a value-add to all the parties involved. Yes, uh, and Edward, I would say, I mean, in the mining industry or in any industry in, in general, that's a, that's a hot word if you want to use it and play it as a card, you know. I won't do it because we're risking safety. So obviously, uh, everybody will then say, okay, I'll step back. In this case, they could not really allow that first. Secondly, and it all becomes about what is the important factor in transformation success at the end of the day, it comes down to leadership. Yeah. And the fact that that leader, that underground manager, knows and believes on what can be achieved. I was still a lead analyst on this one. I sold the thing in four days because he knew exactly what he wanted. He just wanted the confirmation of how much is there and how are we going to do it, which was easy. You, know, you don't need to convince him that he has a problem. He knew he had a problem just wanted quantification and the right solution for it. So we've previously spoken about the interplay between technology and or technology for planning and people. How is that actually playing out here? Well, from an integrated planning process, we really didn't went down the route initially of uh, uh, the IT component. It is coming now to try to obviously simplify and automate it. We did the first, the, the first technology we used on this was we actually brought every, all the parties to talk to each other in a room for the first time. That was the first piece of technology we used. Uh, put people talking to each other face to face. So they actually brought the guys from Australia to the mine and presenting, here is mine. And by now they were already starting constructing and starting developing. And those people had never worked pre-feasibility studies, all that, and had never worked together. So yeah, there was plans. There was outcomes. Were they aligned? Oh. So it's literally getting the people in the room. It's literally getting the people so. in the room. So obviously when we talk about 23 planning practices, it goes through the different horizons. Obviously what, it, what, what we, wrap, we build it in a mix of top-down approach looking at the longer term, but we could not wait for the short-term component. What was actually fun as well was that when we went in, we were not supposed to look at the management operating systems of each one of the individual areas. We were supposed to install a, what they call the management operating system for underground, but which was really a management control system for all of this with the integrated planning process as a vertical axis, I would say. 
And what we end up having to do is actually designing each one of those management operating systems, especially from an interface perspective in terms of what are the main tools that need to be in place for that particular area, that particular person to then be able to execute that 90% of activity without asking, am I doing the right thing?